Casemiro is old and fat. Fuck him. Rashford is not in it mentally. Fuck him. Like we have to. It's getting boring now. It's a good hate watch to begin my weekend, but I'm it. I'm done with United. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Casuals. As you can see, we're at a new set. We're filming out of an unknown location. You'll never be able to find us, but I hope you like the look. Today we have a bunch of stuff to discuss, starting with football, tennis, cricket, and also F1. Speaking of F1, we have a new member on the team. Welcome, Sats Mind and Place. Sats Mind and Place is what we're calling him. So Zeus was doing too much work, so we decided to get an assistant for him. Yeah. Our good friend Sattu. The peasant, welcome to the show, man. Thank you, boys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, boys. Great to be here. Uh, just two, three quick things to yeah, intro yourself. I am here, so gonna spread a lot of Arsenal and F1 propaganda. So I hope everyone's ready for that. Uh, also gonna take some of the fat jokes of Zias, <laughs> bear the brunt of it along with the work. <laughs> And most importantly, make sure that you guys actually do the forfeits that you all have agreed to. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing. So yeah, Sammy keeps running away. From Amazing. It. Yeah, Sammy. Sammy keeps running away from it. <laughs> Both of you, Percy's have done nothing. We're we've been planning to do it for Plan. a bit now. Hopefully, we do it. I mean, this weekend we're supposed to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. Uh, this weekend we're supposed to do uh, my forfeit, which was doing the dressing up as a. Women or whatever oh, they're yeah. going to do. So yeah, we'll go and get the clothes. We are going to go get the clothes, and we're going to make content yeah. of it as well. And then I have to do the hot sauce thing as well. So we'll do it. We'll do everything. Hot dogs at the pickleball court in the <laughs> other part. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, let's get into the episode. Uh, before we get into the matches and all, uh, we have a new competitor in the YouTube game. Who? This guy. His name is Cristiano Ronaldo or something. I don't know. He fucking one day he had twenty million followers. What did he do before this, dude? I don't know. Played in Saudi, won a couple of Champions Leagues or some shit. Actually, fuck him, bro. Jokes aside, fuck that guy. I'm so pissed off, man. It's here we are like putting in so much work. He just comes in, strolls into the YouTube sphere, and now he Legit. has fucking hundred million subscribers or something. Now we have two huge competitors: Ronaldo and HST. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck man? how are we gonna compete man yeah, this actually, is a messy podcast now just by the way now this is a messy po- podcast you guys are messy fans by Born far and bread. by far right? by, Same. yeah yeah this is a messy Great. podcast it's very easy now anyone ever asks me ronaldo messi usually i try to give them some kind of you know balanced diplomatic answer for me now it's very easy yeah. messi is the goat ronaldo is a view merchant yeah he's a view merchant. <laughs> he's a view merchant did you see his this or that thing yeah It was the lamest shit ever, man. Yeah, it's quite. A, most of his videos are quite gay. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like our videos are not gay. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to be. <laughs> he's just unintentionally gay, but he's making content like it's pretty balls to be honest. It's could not entertain. It's quite content. bad. It's pretty cringe, right? I think, uh, there's rumors that he's gonna start a podcast, so maybe that would be a more fun one, a messy episode. Maybe mm. that would, be. and but if he ever decides to come on the Casuals, we'll become a Ronaldo podcast. Yeah, please. instantly. Yeah. But Allegiance for now, yeah, for mm-hmm. now, fuck you, Ronaldo. Basically, we can be bought. <laughs> we can be bought. Yeah. How do you? Why do you think we moved into this new studio? It's all the Saudi money that's finally kicking in. <laughs> <laughs> he's on. He's on forty-five million subscribers already, which is that's pretty insane. That's fucked up. Yeah, and we are insane. very close to three hundred <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> Um, but that ties into the content, right? Because at this point, he can produce whatever he wants, and he's guaranteed like three to ten million views at the bare minimum. Yeah, but per Instagram post, he makes half a million or something. Like if it's a sponsored post, yeah. straight up like that. Mm. And that was uh, two years ago. Now it's what six hundred million on Instagram or some shit. That's fucked, man. It's crazy. Sick, but good for him. I mean, by far the biggest personality probably in the world. So, yeah, we'll compete. We'll, we'll compete. We'll, we'll yeah. get there. Cool. So let's get into the episode. Anything else we have to discuss? Nope. Let's get in. Cool. Zias, go for it. So um, we had the Premier League once again. Second week. Start off with uh, my favorite, the okay, second favorite game of the week. Brighton United. Brighton win two one. Goals uh, from United side from Diallo and for Brighton Danny Welbeck and Jao Pedro. Welbeck always fucking scores at United. <laughs> he legit, he's the. Uh, I saw that stat that he scored the most goals out of any player that's left the club against United. 
Arsenal, he did it. FA Cup, Brighton, Henshaw, like he keeps doing that. For United, he didn't do anything like that. <laughs> That's not even the most frustrating thing. Obviously, the game was shit. Um, Xerxes with that unfortunate offside. That unfortunate? Garnacho. It's a Dude, classic 9.5 striker role. That's what <laughs> that, a 9.5 would do that, in my opinion. Bro, Garnacho, I don't know, man. Xerxes was literally falling and he hit him in the knee. That was. It reminds me of that. Uh, we'll go back to Ronaldo when he dribbled past everyone against Spain. And he dinked it over Casillas and nanny headed it in. And he fucking <laughs> took his arm man and threw it and shit. So yeah, it was some shit like that. And then yeah, I don't know what the defending was after the corner for the... But at least Garnacho got a good picture from that entire fiasco. Because after <laughs> he uh, scored and celebrated that disallowed goal, uh, there's a good picture taken of him. And he posted that on Twitter. <laughs> uh, saying that we'll come back stronger mm. next game. We will come back stronger next game. So, all in all, a win-win for Ganacho, I think. But um, I just hate being wrong, bro. Because two, se- two episodes ago, I predicted that United would be third. finishing third at the end of the season. So, I hate being wrong. <laughs> it's still early days. Oh, no. Still early days. United <laughs> lost. <laughs> I'm so, so sad about it. Um but I think it's my 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 fault. I shouldn't it's have put my f- my faith in Rashford, in the very smart 9.5 striker Zoxy. Yesterday at the party, someone was arguing with us that Rashford should stay. That's what I was going to bring up. And I just met the guy, bro. I didn't want to hit him already. <laughs> <laughs> but those same United fans were being very pathetic. They were arguing about the quality of... so. He was like, bro, we lost, but the quality of football is better from last season. That right? is a very Arsenal thing to say. Exactly. It's yeah. loser talk. Arsenal Arsenal fans would have said that maybe five years ago. But now we are under the Arteta yeah, regime. Our whole... mentality has changed. I'm always keeping my keys and my wallets in my pocket. <laughs> so I wouldn't stoop down to that level anymore. I'm a new and improved person. Okay, great. New season, new me. New manager, new me. No? The fuck? Is he a new manager? Uh, he is a new manager. Third, Com- fourth season. Compared to, I mean, like, what our mentality was before under Emery and the latter years of Wenger. Um, yeah, Zias? So, but even uh, like a player who was actually came into United what, two years back and was really good, but Casemiro was looking like lost. He was extremely exposed. His passing was extremely sloppy. So, man, I don't know what's going on in that midfield. Kobe Mainu also, again, wasn't the best that game. Obviously, he, he can have a bad game. He's... Don't great. talk shit about Menu. <laughs> One player I'll defend on United, please. No, Menu's great, but like entire team looked terrible. Casemiro, uh, Rashford, by far the worst players on that pitch. I actually thought Mount was decent in the first half until he had to make way for Zoxy. He looks a little lost there yeah, still. And um, Casemiro, what did Jamie Carragher say? Leave before the football leaves you. <laughs> so I think he should do that. I think we keep having these conversations again and again about how their midfield is not fixed. They need a left back. They need a striker. They play a couple good games. They win. They win the FA Cup and all their problems seem to have been fixed. And then we come back to this point again, what Z has brought up. You brought up, oh, Z- Casemiro is old and fat. Fuck him. Rashford is not in it mentally. Fuck him. Like, we have to, it's getting boring now. It was a good hate watch to begin my weekend. But I'm, in, I'm done with United. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> Quick shout out to uh, Dilit. For leaving Jao Pedro unmarked for that uh, last goal at the end. I am not understanding how he's taking Maguire off, man. I, I understand that Dilit has to get into the game slowly, slowly. But if it's one all, don't take a centre back out, man, when it's actually like working decent at that point. I don't know. I didn't like I said it last episode also, don't take him out like that. Don't take him out. Pencho took him out again and they scored. Don't listen to me. His selections are very poor for this game. Huh? Yeah. Ten Hag. Rashford cannot start also, man. You got to start. Why is Garnacho he not starting Garnacho? Why is he not starting Zoxy up front? Leader playing? and all. Na. Yeah, the Bruno thing also, I don't understand. Bruno basically has played for the first two games. Striker. Striker. There's no one making those runs behind the uh, defense. Yeah. The one time y'all did it, y'all scored with Diallo. And they were playing such a high line. It was just ridiculous. Bruno doesn't have the pace or the size to play at striker. He is a cam. He's a very creative and a good passer, I think. Decent defence as well. Yeah, I think also just adding to the Bruno point, you can see the football IQ at some stages, right? He's making the right runs, but they clearly, clearly miss that like striking presence up front. Yeah, definitely. Or someone in Bruno's position to make that pass to him. If Bruno's making that run, then who's making that pass? You said Mount was looking better, but 
Mount is not doing that right now. Like he's not at that level. He's not. So yeah, fuck United. Let's done with United yeah, talk. I mean, Let's move on to the next uh, game. Yeah, we'll go Chelsea next or Arsenal next? Let's go Chelsea next. Chelsea okay, just played. So, yeah, Chelsea Wolves just got over. Like a couple hours ago, right? Yeah, like, like not even like an hour or so. But uh, yeah, great game. Actually, really entertaining game. High scoring game. Eight goals. Chelsea winning 6-2. Uh, goals coming from Jackson, Palmer, Felix got a goal each. And Madway came with three goals. Also, Palmer with a hat-trick of assists. Yeah, but um, <coughs> insane game. It was two all in the first half. So, four goals in the first half. Chelsea playing honestly really well. Defence was a little bit shaky at points. Oh, it's That For the viewers, that is keep that blue flag flying high. Keep the blue flag. Fucking worst acronym ever. Whenever Chelsea does anything good. But it's an acronym. What do you mean worst acronym? Why do you... What is... bro? What is Koig? Koig is... Come on, you gunners. It flows so smoothly. I think it's a little cringe. Not gonna lie. I think that's also a little cringe. Koig, Koig, or whatever. But it's the worst thing ever, bro. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure some people just short from the... They didn't start off with an acronym. It was the whole thing. Keep, keep the blue flag flying. Keep the blue flag okay. flying. But yeah, like I said, defense a little bit shaky. Great attacking play. Although I do think some of Madueke's goals maybe should have been saved. But a lot a lot of positives from Chelsea. A lot of overlaps by um, pullbacks. Very impressed by Malo Gusto. He's been absolutely solid. Although I don't think he has a cemented spot in this team. Why, Reese James is going to come and play or whatever? Whenever he comes back for two, three games before getting injured again. <laughs> <laughs> I say no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but all in all, was this Chelsea being good or was it Wolves being that bad? It was, it was definitely Chelsea being good. Just shut the fuck it, up. It was, you could only score six goals Just against the team that's being that fuck bad. shut the fuck up. <laughs> and you all also conceded two goals against Wolves, bro. It was what, two all at 30 minutes or something? Two all, like, yeah. half time. It's, yeah. The first half was like, okay, Chelsea are in the relegation battle, dude. That's what we are looking forward to this season. And then by the end of the game, they look like world beaters. But football's a game of two halves. No? Are <laughs> <laughs> wisdom, wisdom Wednesdays with Zeus. Um, it's not a Wednesday, but continue. Anything else? Uh, yeah, just adding to that, I think they definitely looked like a different team mm -hmm. when they came out in the second half. There's a lot of ball pinging going around in the first half. The mm -hmm. ball was just flying anywhere. But I mean, if they can keep that second half momentum going, then it doesn't look yeah. bad for them. Also, we, we have to take into consideration that it, it is a newly formed team. A lot of new players. Um, really? Lord Boli himself has. <laughs> <laughs> you before, before we sat down to record, Zeus was fucking excited, huh? He's like maybe maybe the maybe we're going to win this season. Who knows? We're definitely in we're, this title. Look at this. Look at this. It's Future definitely yeah. happening. Dark if, horse, we didn't, dark if we didn't play City first game, we would have beat anyone else, and we would have beat City second week. It was oh, not. Oh, yeah. he's <laughs> beaten Wolves. So the Premier League is basically against them. Yeah. They have designed the friction list to screw Chelsea. Yes. No, because then City fuck can't fuck us later. No, fuck us in the uh, start. Acha, okay, insane logic. He's gone. We beat Chelsea. Beat Wolves six two next week. We could have beat City also. <laughs> From Wolves to City. That's the same your logic. Level. Yeah. That's the same level. Um, but yeah, I'm happy for Noni uh, Madueke. Love his name, first of all. I absolutely love that name. Uh, I don't think he's going to be... This is the first and last game that he's going to play well. He's one of <laughs> those kind of players. I am. Uh, not saying this at all to piss any Chelsea fans off. This is what I truly believe. Um... And yeah, that's about it from the Chelsea game. No, what did he say? Yeah, yeah that Cole Palmer up. and the Madueke thing. No, so there's two, uh, yes. two things I want to bring up. Before the game uh, yesterday, actually, uh, Madueke posted something on Instagram. So he posted a blank, uh, like a black screen and he wrote, this place is absolute dog shit. And he tagged Wol Wolverhampton. And like he deleted it, he deleted it two minutes later and he said, wrong account, but guy, damn, you guys are fast. <laughs> so every, every time he touched the ball today, he was getting heavily booed. And that's why like the Chelsea fans, Wolves, uh, sorry, Chelsea players and Wolves fans. Were Enzo like, Fernandez started booing? <laughs> Enzo <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was... That's it was, fucking awesome, bro. And then he goes and he scores, goes a, hat scores a hat trick. Against him, and then he fucked up the hat trick because they asked him about Palmer. Palmer gave him all the assists for the three goals. Yeah. And they asked him, what do you think about Cole Palmer? And he fucked it up by saying, he is cold and I am fire. <laughs> so that was a very Classic cringe Chelsea comment. cringe. Cringe. <laughs> like their fans getting tattoos on their wrist. Oh my God. God. Hating on the black yeah. man. <laughs> Which, what the fuck are you saying? <laughs> Um, yeah, that's about it from the Chelsea game. Mm -hmm. 
it'll be very funny. I want to. It'll be very funny if Nani Madio K gets transferred to Wolves at some point in his career. Yeah. And then we can pull this clip and his story <laughs> back up. How much did they sign him for? I think. I, I, isn't he? I thought he was a. Um, no, he's not. He's an academy player. No, he's not. He was a. Crystal Palace Academy player. Oh, okay. He has a uh, for like twenty eight, twenty nine million pounds. Oh, okay. what the fuck? Okay. I was he's just a, seeing a, if he was one of the eighty hundred million guys that you have bought. No, but the twenty nine million and all is also because of the PSR rules. Remember, we got into it in one yeah. of the um, episodes buying. I don't remember. Okay, but whatever. Okay. Whatever. He's on, a, he's on a seven and a half year contract. Amazing. <laughs> like half our players are signed till twenty twenty three. He's not going to Wolves anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Um, What? What's next? Uh, we have uh, Arsenal versus uh, Villa. See, I don't know if we touched up on the in- on in the intro, but Satu is also an Arsenal fan. Sat's mind and place. Sat's mind and he place. He said no Pro- propaganda for Arsenal. Yeah. Man. So he's a so we have two Arsenal fans in the house now. Arsenal Villa two nil goals uh, coming by um, Trossard and uh, Partey. Yeah, I'd like to have your thoughts on the match. Two things. Say Trossard. Always come off the bench. Do not start him. When he starts, he doesn't play well. Partey, stay in jail. <laughs> What the fuck, bro? He was never in jail. First of all, That's, that sounds should be little racist to me. And, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and disavow Partey's actions. Uh, but very happy with the performance. Very, very, very happy with the performance. The first half we looked a little shaky. Villa came very close to scoring. Raya made some amazing stops just before the game. We were having this discussion. I think I was having it with you and a couple other friends of mine. Uh, Raya versus Martinez, and I was talking about how Raya is good on the ball, but he might not be the best shot stopper. Whereas Martinez is like that good shot stopper. But this game, Raya, I think Raya was made us win it because in the first half he made two insane stops. That header of Ollie Watkins, I think it was. It was basically an old uh, open goal. Yeah. And he just was on the ground, popped back up, and then padded it away. Amazing from Raya. Love the shit houseery from Ben White and William Saliba. When um, someone, McGinn. yeah, McGinn, McGinn shot the ball on Saliba, and then White came and shot the ball back. So on him. basically, what happened was that uh, McGinn fouled Saliba, and bef- right before the referee blew, he knew it was going to be a free kick, so he just kicked the ball at Saliba when he was on the ground. Yeah. Then White got really pissed and did the same thing to McGinn. Yeah. So that's yeah. what happened. It was a fiery moment. Yeah, and even though that first half was super shaky, we came out in the second half as if nothing ever happened in that first half. Like Z said earlier in the episode, football is a game of two halves. Uh, and Sorry, in the second now. half, we were fucking on fire. And I don't want to. I don't want to say the I word. I don't want to say the I word, but I'm just saying that the only team we lost to last season was Villa, and we've already beaten them. Nice. That that was my two cents on Arsenal. I would bottle. <laughs> I would bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I would bottle. Yes. <laughs> Just for context, I would. He means invincible. I didn't say it. Yes, that's mind and place. Yeah, I think both the goalkeepers honestly had a really good performance. Martinez got a bit unlucky on the second goal. It kind he of couldn't see. I feel that's why. Yeah. He- Problem. He got it. his hand to it. He, sh- I think he should have stopped it because he got his hand to it. I, I don't think his wrist was strong enough in that moment. But yeah. Yeah, I think honestly, I was just telling Zias this before as well. We did look a bit shaky. There are some gaps that we need to work on. I think Partey also got caught out a couple of times. So definitely some areas we can look at. But yeah, completely agree on Trossard. He has to come off the bench. Only. He's your Ole, bro. Who starts then? Trossard does start Martinelli. Martinelli, and I, yeah. Now those are issues that we can get into another episode. I feel like we need a winger. We need a striker, and then I think. We also no. That's a. I I think we need a winger and a striker. Why Kaya? Kaya Woods, Tane. Why Kai? As a as a replacement for Kai. Uh-huh. If Kai was ever injured, uh, you know, why do you want to replace him? He's so good. <laughs> What if he was injured? But I don't want to replace him. Let me reword it. Let me reword it. Let me reword it. If he's ever injured, we need a second striker to give him that competition. You know, so that he gets better. Because if he sees someone on his ass, hmm. he's going to be like, I need to put in that extra effort. And maybe from a nine point five on ten striker, he might go into a nine point seven, nine point nine striker. Yeah, he did that for Germany when he had competition. He played really, really well. <laughs> 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 But yeah, I just wrote down that uh, yeah, Aston Villa looked really good despite losing, and Arsenal two games in a row, two nil, clean sheets. Um, yeah, Raya obviously 
Turning off. Season is ours, boys. <laughs> Yuck, man. <laughs> <laughs> so excited. Yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next game, um, City versus Ipswich. So we were actually watching this game together yesterday, all of us, and uh, we all got really happy in the seventh, sev- sorry, seventh minute. Or so I read this guy's name as Sammy Socks My Dicks. Bro, I was okay. Okay, that that's crazy that you said that because I did the same thing today morning as well. But continue. Sammy Say that to him for fun. <laughs> <laughs> so he scored in the seventh minute. We all got really happy. Like it switched down, beating City, and then Haaland scored in the twelfth. KDB again in the 14th and Haaland again in the 16th minute. So within nine minutes of Ipswich scoring the first, Ipswich. Ha- <laughs> <laughs> Ipswich. Within within nine minutes of Ipswich scoring their first goal, uh, City were three one up. So it was yeah, crazy. it's so we were watching it together and when that first goal, we started singing, went thinking in. out loud. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when that first goal went in. Uh, I had a rush of emotions, man. I was like, okay, this is definitely Arsenal's year. City has scored. Uh, sorry, uh, Ipswich has scored. <laughs> Ipswich has scored. Uh, I started painting all these images in my head. You know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I did get ahead of myself in that moment. And then City came back and just scored. It felt like someone slapped me on my cock and my balls. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then was there, was so one, <laughs> there was a slight crack in that picture that I'd built, you know, in my head. And then City goes and scores another goal in the next minute. And then another goal and another goal and another goal. And by the end of that, that image had become City lifting the trophy. So yeah, <laughs> uh, back to square one. And yeah. Yeah, I mean, sick goals from Harlan, bro. Like, we, I always think that he's the you know powerhouse, just pushing through and scoring. But today, I mean, he scored that second goal. He scored was crazy. Like he headed it across, past the keeper, and then he nicely just lofted it in the empty net. Yeah. Like before, I feel like he'd go to smash it and then look sick still. But this composure, Finesse. I feel like, is a new element he's added to the game. Yeah, for and sure. He's looking scarier than ever, Pencho. Mm-hmm. And then um, the other thing also, he scored from outside the outside the box. It's so weird looking at him doing anything outside the box. First of all, let alone scoring. But I was looking it up. It's like his third goal for City outside the box. He barely is active. Three out of what ninety four now. Some yeah, some <laughs> shit like that. I understand that uh, he, he now has as many hat tricks, Premier League hat tricks as Wayne Rooney. Who's who's better, Rooney or Haaland? Rooney. Haaland. Rooney. Rooney. <laughs> of course, Rooney. But I'm just kidding. At the no. end of the end of his career in Premier League, I think Haaland. Yeah, if I we think. want Rooney to join our pro clubs team, bro, you have yeah. to show Sorry. some respect. Vaza <laughs> signed yeah, to go there. Vaza, I love you. Start <laughs> 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 um, some bar fights. He'll come. <laughs> also, Rico Rico Lewis with possibly the miss of the season contender. He yeah. had an open goal and he just fucking whacked it on the crossbar. Uh, and also Savinho. Is basically a Mares regen. He has that number twenty six left foot. I think he's better than Mares. We should start calling Mares the Algerian Savinho and oh, not already. Savinho the Brazilian. I think one more picture is gonna crack in your head. <laughs> shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's actually insane. I think Mares uh, reposted like a clip of uh, Savinho's highlights, and I was like, "Why is he retweeting highlights of himself from City?" <laughs> <laughs> Opened the video, and I was like, "Okay, that's." Yeah, he was. Um, ins- he's been insane. Even against Chelsea, he was really good. The Savinho's pro- like he's on the on the City uh, Ipswich game also. So I got got uh, on the City Ipswich game because just before uh, um, the game happened and the FPL deadline shut to make your substitutes, I re- I got it. I read a tweet that said Haaland is injured. And then I was like, shit, we need to make that change for our team. Blah, 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 blah. Turns out Haaland wasn't injured. And thank God I never made that change. And he was our captain. And he was our captain. Thank God I didn't do all that. And turns out that tweet was from this Twitter account called Slow Sports News. <laughs> it's basically a parod- It's basically a satire on Sky Sports News. So good job them. And good job that we couldn't. We didn't make that change. Yeah, a lot of people, including my brother, triple captain yeah. Haaland. <laughs> Fucking hell, man! Crazy. I yeah. had Madueke last week, and I removed him. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. I was just gonna say we can keep this or not, but you talked about the miss of the season. Also, Ollie Watkins in front of the New England manager had another absurd miss. It was yeah. horrible. Basically, an open goal. Raya dived the other mm-hmm. way. 
and then Sammy, you were telling me a story about the manager, the New England manager. So Lee Carsley, I think I heard this on another podcast itself, but um, Lee Carsley was a midfielder for Everton in the early 2000s, and he played with this other midfielder called Thomas Graveson, if I'm not wrong. Both of them were bald, uh, and in that one season, both of them played really well together, and they ended up finishing fourth. David Moyes was the manager at the time. Uh, so the story goes is uh, Real Madrid really liked that midfield duo. Um, and they ended up signing Graveson. In that moment, uh, it was very confusing. People weren't understanding why uh, Real Madrid would go after a player from Everton. But they ended up signing him. He didn't play that much for Everton, uh, for Real Madrid. And the story is that they actually mistook one baldy for another. Because both of them are bald and white. Uh, and they actually wanted to sign Lee Carsley. Uh, and by mistake, they ended up signing Thomas Graveson. Insane story. And at the highest level, these things happen. Imagine <laughs> their fucking recruitment. <laughs> we set up this new studio. You're paying so much attention to detail. They're signing a player for millions. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, get the bald white guy. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> sounds like what United is doing right now. Uh, my <laughs> so yeah. unnecessary. Um, and then quick shout out to the Arsenal boys. It will be an Emily Smith row for getting Fulham over the line in their game. Story it, not true. Also, um, the Bournemouth versus uh, Newcastle game happened. Um, and there was a controversial handball decision uh, in the 95th minute. Sinistera scored the go-ahead goal or the winning goal. But then it was chalked uh, as a handball. I didn't think it was a handball. I thought it was a shoulder ball more than anything. Uh, but... PL is the best fucking league in the world. Yeah. But their referee system is like BMC, bro. Do like, they'll cut off these lights yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> should you shut the fuck up, man? <laughs> or basically, like, like, why is their admin or like their referee system so bad? The Arsenal game didn't start on time. You know why? Because they were having fucking technical issues with the communication system in the VAR matchroom center. Oh. Like, that shouldn't be happening, right? Yeah. In the Shouldn't Premier League. We Shouldn't be happening. We need a Sammy's comparison segment. <laughs> you to uh, also, I don't know what the handball rule is anymore. Uh, because they've drawn this arbitrary line on the shoulder that this is the end of the so shoulder. Flexing or tricep. Uh, I think they should just do it for the elbow. Because everyone's elbow is so fucking like, clear that this is where the elbow starts. There's already a... Line. God has made the line. God has made the line. Yeah, God has made the line. <laughs> God Thank made you, God. Uh, <laughs> So I don't, I don't know why they, they should, they need to clear this shit up or the PL just needs to do a better job, hire better refs who can make better decisions. Yeah, even last week when Chelsea City game, there was a ball that like clearly hit Kovacic on the elbow. and they Yeah, even Chelsea should have won that game, 100%. Sure. That penalty would have changed so many things. It would have been one all. It would have been one all. You sure. know what? If Kovacic was, if Chelsea wouldn't have sold Kovacic in the first place, that situation wouldn't have happened. Yeah, that truth only scored. So, <laughs> who... <laughs> <laughs> Whose fault was it? Todd Chelsea's Bully. fault. Todd Bully. Okay. <laughs> cool. Let's move on to uh, the FPL stuff. Yep. So, like we told y'all, we were going to come out with some very exciting presents, gifts for our FPL league that we've made and put so much thought behind it. Um, so, now I'm going to get into it. But basically, every... Every game week that our team, the casuals, performs below the weekly average, Tana and I will put 100 rupees each, is yes. what we decided. Yep. 100 rupees each. In the comment section, let us know how much you want us to put every week. But if like comment will win. Yeah, yeah, most no, like. We don't actually have funding. <laughs> we do not have funding. But we'd put, we will put 100 rupees each in this little penalty piggy, this little box. So last game week, we uh, actually scored above the game week average. So we will be putting absolutely nothing in this. Suck it, y'all. Uh, <laughs> this game week, we also projected to finish above the game week average. So suck it, y'all, again. Uh, but yeah, this is it. Our penalty piggy, right? Penalty that piggy, a.k.a. Zeus. A.k.a. <laughs> Don't be so rude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Sure. So yeah, super exciting. This... Uh, Piggy is going to be here throughout the season and we will be putting money in it. Is, is, av is average a bit too easy, I, I would think? 
um i don't think so okay as you need to say this before the show bro yeah. <laughs> we cannot do a whole segment yeah we can't yeah <laughs> switch it up <laughs> i just want we I spoke just, about this so much bro i just wanted to put it and out and now like <laughs> i just wanted to put it out there so they know um i don't want to say it before <laughs> okay whatever uh that's that was about it football let's move on to we had, like we said the reason we have satu on the show to bring up F1. No, the reason we have Satu on the show is to help you with your work. <laughs> oh, and that. You are getting too busy. Assistant to the ZS, bro. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we had uh, the Zandvoort uh, GP this week, which is the Dutch GP. And yeah, Satu, you want to... Satu, go off, man. Go off, bro. Uh, yeah, go. Also, I want to uh, preface this by saying we did some intense uh, analysis and we were realizing that we need more women to watch this uh, this podcast. So talking about F1 was one of those reasons. That's why you brought Satu. Huh? That's why we brought Satu. <laughs> <laughs> Drive to survive. The half Parsi women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Satu, so go off. Yeah, I think uh, overall not all that much to talk about in terms of the race, but uh, Norris sixth time this season <clears throat> where he's absolutely fucked it from the start. Uh, either way, I mean that car, McLaren car, is looking extremely strong. They went on to win by a 22 second margin to Max, which is not easy to do under any circumstance, especially at his home race. That was a quick one breath sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I've been keeping that in since like 8 p.m. <laughs> But um, yeah, it's it's going to be a very uh, interesting end to this season. I think unfortunately the drivers' championship seems to be a bit chalked already because. Uh, he was competing with leclerc for the first half and norris now so uh, yeah let's see where it ends up should be But interesting get, so i have a few questions for you about i so i used to watch f1 pretty often last two seasons i've been kind of checked out just because of red bull's dominance um so this season what's been happening with red bull and their performance so without getting into too much detail yeah I give it to me in like two sentences yes. one breath one two breath. sentences <laughs> Uh, so Red Bull's basically the best already. So automatically that means they get less testing time, wind tunnel time. Uh, so they basically have a disadvantage on the development of the car. Uh, if we assume that they're at the top of the peak right now, everyone else is catching up. So they are going to see a downfall. But I don't think anyone expected it to be this harsh. Um, and then do you have a question you want to ask? No, no. Go okay, on. yeah. Um, So right now what's happening with McLaren? I've been seeing so much Lando and McLaren content on my feed. I wasn't expecting them to be this good. So what have they been doing this season that has been propelling them towards the top? So McLaren interestingly, I don't think anyone else does this really. Uh so they kind of get their upgrades in bulk. So they've only had three major upgrades since last year. uh and every time they've had one it's a significant increase i think the last one they got uh, norris won the race right after that mm. uh clearly the team back at the factory is doing good work and um i mean let's see we've seen aston martin in similar positions and they've kind of fallen off the map so let's see if it sticks But i don't really know much was upgrade thing so you're saying mclaren's done like three so far so could you compare that to like other teams how many have they done till now from last year yeah so major upgrades gets a bit difficult to categorize but for example mercedes does an incremental or linear upgrade period so they'll get like small upgrades in every week okay. and uh, mclaren might miss a few weeks and then just uh, before or after a major break they'll come with okay. like a lot of uh, major upgrades so getting to the team that i support in formula 1 which is ferrari something that i've inherited from my dad um i'm a ford guy but You're a Ford guy. <laughs> uh so Ferrari has been one of those teams every time they come out and say this year is going to be IO this year is going to be IO and they fuck it up right that's that's fair. What's Arsenal happening? What you're talking about? What's happening this we are talking about Formula 1 oh, bro. Sorry. You know women don't watch that much football. They t- it's not good for retention bro. <laughs> But What I heard is that Hamilton is making the switch to Ferrari next season. Ferrari's kind of <laughs> just gone out. What happened? Oh, I Ferrari. 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 Like that. <laughs> Am yeah. I saying it weird? <laughs> Very weird. <laughs> What should I? How should I say it? Satu, how should he? Ferrari. Uh, what am I saying? Ferrari. Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Ferrari. <laughs> Ferrari is that better? Yeah. Okay, so. Hamilton is moving to Ferrari next season. 
how's that move looking as of now so uh ferrari is, is just the most like random why are you saying team. ferrari <laughs> <laughs> also for context satu is the biggest hamilton fan okay yes yeah. that's that's one of the the reasons i asked you this question yeah absolute journey man wherever he goes i go i don't have any team loyalty here <laughs> he's here or in bombay right now follow <laughs> 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 but uh yeah honestly no one knows what's going on with that team uh everything they do is kind of hit or miss they still seem decently strong i mean like they finished third today and they've kind of kept some thread of consistency so um, yeah let's see i mean obviously for me fingers crossed they kind of get their shit together and have next season or next to next season in the bag but Let's see where that goes. Perfect. So. Moving forward, uh, Sats Mind and Place will provide all these updates about. We'll have him in his F1 corner, and we'll pop in here and there whenever we have questions from yeah. him. Yeah, amazing But segment. Amazing. I understood nothing, <laughs> so that means you were speaking everything correctly. I feel. <laughs> uh, but yeah, great job, Sats Mind and Place. Um, I've got some perspective or some kind of context to this season. I'll start watching from the next race onwards. Satu gonna be on Hello Reels. <laughs> <laughs> for the women yeah i have a women. question do you actually think what that's what it's called or are you just calling him like that's what you read it as his, his instagram page that's what i read it as okay so it's not <laughs> <laughs> should step in to clarify it's such mind palace such mind you like to chat mind and place <laughs> okay so we'll plug it in the episode we'll just put yeah. um <laughs> Mind and place, I love it. But great, great first Formula One segment by us. Great job, by Sats us. Mind Palace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that was> awesome. <laughs> um, okay, finally, let's round it off with tennis. U.S. Open is happening. Um, there was a bit of controversy that has been circulating the tennis world. The Yannick Sinner doping accusations. So I can just quickly give it to y'all in like two sentences. Yannick Sinner tested for a banned substance twice after ingesting the drug during a massage. So basically, the masseuse was using some cream that had that banned substance, and it entered his body through an open wound. Whenever I've got a massage, I always, twice in my life, I've told the masseuse <laughs> to stay away from an open wound because, bro, it hurts. So how did that? cream get into his body was it through his penis was it happy ending i mean good on him though enjoy yourself that is my take away from this entire situation you have anything on this yeah i mean that has to be it right his penis yeah his penis his hole or his arse hole <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah everyone's losing their shit in the tennis world oh how like uh, This is can't be allowed in our sport. This can't be allowed yeah, in our sport. Yeah, you can't be getting hand jobs and all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, Andy Roddick put it in perspective. He said that the amount that was found in his body was fifty-eight thousand times smaller than a grain of salt. And I, I, I don't want to pass any judgment or anything. But like, people need to stop losing their shit, and people need to stop pretending like they are fucking. experts on like banned substances and like drug control and substance control in tennis it's fucking annoying when that happens online if the body has decided the federation tennis federation has decided that he's clear he's good to go fine he's good to go man no but as a player like a rival player you would Andy not Roddick. like that as a rival player like djokovic said this is not correct like something is messed up with the system system yeah. yeah but it's not yanik sinner's fault right I think it's a system. Like then, they should have better systems in place to like stop that from happening. Yeah, That's get fair. the Premier League system in. <laughs> <laughs> I think as an as an athlete, you also have a responsibility to know what substances are banned and what you are getting into. I agree. I I am on the side that this is definitely not a performance enhancing thing he's done. He's just it may be a mistake, own oversight. Don't what, be an expert. Expert. Ex <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, man. People are just now claiming to be insane. Like. Oh, this is what should have happened. This is what should have happened. This is what should have happened. Like, yeah, leave that to us. We are. We are. Yeah, let us dis. Let's uh, <laughs> let us decide that. But anyway, um, U.S. Open is happening, and because I want people to get even more pissed off, I want Yannick Sinner to win the U.S. Open. He's your pick. He's my pick. I have Djokovic uh, looking good after that gold medal match 
in the Olympics, and he, I think he's fired the fuck up, bro. Like he's gonna get it done. <laughs> His mentality is too good, bro. I I was actually a sinner as well. I mean, he's doping. How can he not win? I'm just losing after doping. Um, but so yeah, that, what were your Palace. predictions? Sinner, so, no, I go sinner. So, no. so he goes sinner. So no. I'm gonna be boring. I think it's gonna be a, a Novak Alcaraz final, and I think Alcaraz takes it Ooh. as revenge. Uh, we can make a bet on that, Satu, if it happens. Always. Is that Shokovic even possible? Are they on different sides of the bracket? <laughs> they should know. They seed one and two. No? Okay, perfect. Um, and for women, uh, Venus Williams. <laughs> 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 so you had some interesting stats on one of y'all had some interesting stats on Coco Golf. Yeah. So honestly, I think Swiatek or Sabalenko takes it over her, but I am really rooting for her. She has three records that she can potentially break. Uh, so one is become the first player ever since Serena Williams to defend her U.S. Open title, which is, is going to be. Amazing. Sorry, sorry, interrupt. Is that yeah. player or is that women play? Women play. Okay. Uh, then also become the youngest player to defend a major title in 26 years, mm. which is going to be another very crazy record for her to break. And lastly, become the tenth woman in the Open era to defend her maiden Grand Slam title. Damn, very interesting. Uh, Satu, I did not listen to anything. I, I got a little, sorry, sad smile in place. I did not listen to anything. I was a little distracted by Meg's messages. <laughs> Meg is a, a producer who's helping us right now set up everything. Um, thank you so much, Meg, first of all. But Ma- l- just listen to this message. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> just oh listen God. to this message. I this can't is, wait. These are his orders. Everyone laugh at an even volume. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't get too loud. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, the laugh is disturbed. I guess it's disturbing the audio. So let's practice our laughs real quick at an even volume. <laughs> is that good, Meg? <laughs> you know, I go to text. Stop touching the mic. Dad. <laughs> Moving rumble. <Yeah. laughs> Bro, please control the volume of the laugh. But thanks, Meg. That means he's properly listening to us and he's trying to help us as much. Yeah. So of course, thank you, Meg. He's doing the right thing. Um, yeah, uh, so thanks for those stats, Satu. Repeat them now. I don't remember. <laughs> okay. They're all basically, they're all the stats are just based on what defending the title. Coco Goff? Yeah, nothing happens if... Uh, so, so all these stats are based only on her defending her title. None of them matter she doesn't. Okay. She, she can't break any other record. Yeah, bro, records happen after you yeah. play only, na? These are all potentials. This is just something to look forward to. Yeah. But yeah, my pick for it is Schwantek. It is Schwantek. That's how you put it. That's how you have to be. It's Schwantek. It's Schwantek. She said this in an interview. Yeah. Schwantek. Fuck you guys. Schwantek. Schwantek. Yeah. Whatever. Continue. Coco Golf is my pick as well. I really hope all these records come. Coco Golf for me. I mean, she has the most to fight for. So I'll go with her. You will go with Coco Golf. Yes. I think it just... Satu forgot I, to oh, sorry. I will go with Coco Goff. She has the most to fight for, so I think she's going to win. Perfect. Uh, yeah, as I said, Coco Goff, uh, <laughs> the story is lining up for her, so I really hope she's the one who takes it home. Cool, done with tennis. Uh, let's just touch on cricket real quick. Um, Shikhar Dhawan retired. Um, Kabbar has retired. Absolute legend. Love his swag. Loved his entire mustache game and everything that came. Celebration as well. Celebrations. Uh, for me, the memory goes back to um, the 2013 ICC Champions Trophy when we had an amazing opening pair and he was a really, really important part of it. We won that trophy and a lot was down to Shikhar's dominance at the top. So yeah, thank you so much for all the memories. Hopefully you have like an amazing life after this yeah for me the memory is his first test match where he had 185 damn really fast innings as well he came in and just bang yeah 185 runs sick and since then he's been opening at both mm-hmm. and now yeah he's retiring from the IPL also which I did not expect like you know because people it's very it's a very easy thing for them to make money on and he plays well still so he's a great opener yeah I just want to know how his hair works bro I cannot <laughs> understand it <laughs> Like, he has those lines where he's also balding, Bald. but like, I, I can't understand it, bro. Money, money. money. What money? <laughs> money can buy you hair, bro. <laughs> Sala will prove a point. Yes. Sala Aksar, 
and Shikhar now. Shikhar also maybe, but I like it how it is. That's his style, his swag, and yeah, yeah. man. Thank you, great career, congratulations, Shikhar Dhawan. Yeah, uh, and then finally, Bangladesh played. Um, Bangladesh and Pakistan are playing a test match right now. The first game just got over today. Um, Bangladesh won. That game has been hilarious. Insane. I've just been following it on Twitter. Um, you want to go on it real quick? No, I don't. Okay, so what happened in that game was, I'm just going to look it up real quick. Um, Park, Pakistan declared at 448 for six. Then they went on to concede 565 <laughs> runs. And then in the next innings, they got all out for 146 to lose to Bangladesh by 10 wickets. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Declaring at 440 and then conceding 500 is just too good, bro. It's too funny. A typical Pakistan. Yeah. At the start of the season, Rizwan and all these players came out and said, our goal this year is to play in the champions, in the ICT Test Champions final. How? How? What the fuck? And it's been 1,294 days since Pakistan won their last home test match. At home? This is a stat I read on Twitter. It might be wrong. Twitter. But I love it because it's shitting on Pakistan. Um, but yeah, what the fuck is going on? Just It's just comedy, bro. Yeah, someone I know lo has lost a lot of money on that. <laughs> he bet Pakistan or draw and this is what has happened. And the way he explained it to me this tonight, like how it had me like, Benjo Pakistan. <laughs> 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 I, I put a safe bet, I put a safe bet. <laughs> No safe bets when it comes to Pakistan. But thank you so much for providing us some entertainment. Keeping Test Cricket alive and interesting. So if anything at all, they've done a yeah, great job. Yeah, and India isn't going to play until next month or something. It's going to be a while since they played last yeah. also. And it was a shitty Sri Lanka series. So <laughs> thanks for the entertainment, Pakistan. Yeah, and then finally, um, Ritika Sachde, Rohit Sharma's wife is pregnant. Uh, congratulations to them. Uh, I'm tying it back to 29 June when we won the World Cup. It was a great night for India, but an even better night for Rohit Sharma. So, who's going to be heavier now? <laughs> <laughs> and and <that. laughs> um, Yeah, that was about it. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Our, sets, uh, our setup is going to keep changing. We're still figuring it out in this new studio. Keep watching. If you guys have any suggestions for us, want to send stuff to us to put up in the studio, leave it down in the comment, DM us. Do let us know. We are open to ideas. And a huge, huge shout out to uh, our friend Meg, who's been helping us set up everything. Uh, I don't know too much about cameras, mics, or anything of that sort. Not a stunner. Uh, but Meg has been here for the past three, four days, helping us set up, helping us buy equipment. And like, helping Basically us start running this around with us and then also doing the little nitty gritties to yeah. make us sound so good. So thank you, bro. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, for the instructions. We laugh carefully. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and welcome, Satu. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like, share, subscribe. See you guys. Check out the F1 section, baby. <laughs> <laughs>